This video we're going to look at Kinder Morgan and Kinder Morgan is an oil and gas midstream company. Midstream refers to the points in the oil production process that falls between upstream and downstream. Midstream activities include the storage, processing, and transportation of oil. What I do in my videos is I run my personalized discounted cash flow model and this way I could find out the true value of a company's stock. And then I look at the ratios of that company and compare them to its competitors. I do this with you throughout the entire video, so it's like we're doing it together. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $32.9 billion. It's a pretty good sized company. And let's get their stock price at $14.53, so that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows, then you discount that back to today's value. And that's exactly what I'm doing in this video. And the best way to estimate the future cash flows is to first pull their actual cash flows. And that's what I'm doing right now. And then I'm going to pull the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement. And I'm going to put four years of that into the model. And then I'm going to pull the revenue, which are the sales for each year. And it looks pretty steady, the sales. They really haven't grown too much. And each year, the free cash flow is above the net income. I always like to look at that to make sure that's the case. And it looks like the net profit margins have grown pretty considerably. It went from 5% all the way up to 17%. That means in 2016, they only converted 5% of their revenue into profit. And in 2019, they converted 17% of their revenue into profit. So you can see the revenue is almost identical between 2016 and 2019, but they profited three times as much in 2019. And that's what you want as an investor. You want profits, because that's what you get, the money that's left over after all the expenses. Let's look at the capital structure of the company to get more information. The interest they pay in their debt is $1.8 billion. Let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet. We'll go to the liability section. And the current debt is $2.5 billion. That's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of $32 billion. That's debt due after 12 months. They pay 5.25% interest on their debt. Interest payments are tax deductible, so let's get their effective tax rate. The income before tax is $3.2 billion. And the income tax is $926 million. So the effective tax rate is 29%. The cost of debt is 3.7%. Now we need the cost of equity and we need the beta. The beta is how volatile a stock is. It pretty much means how sensitive the stock is to movements in the market. And this has a beta of 1.01, so it moves pretty much with the market. The S&P index has a beta of 1. Now we need some more information from their balance sheet. Let's get their current assets. We need to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets are mainly cash, accounts, receivables, and inventory. These are the assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. That's 3.2 billion. We also need the current liabilities to calculate the current ratio. That's 5.1 billion. And their equity, that's assets minus liabilities. Also the value of the firm according to the balance sheet. That's 33 billion. Let's go back to the income statement and get the EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, and that's 3.9 billion. Let's look at the capital structure. The cost of debt is 3.7% and they have 50% debt. The cost of equity is 10% and the weight of equity is 50%. So the WAC is 6.9%, which is a blend of the cost of equity and cost of debt. And that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows right here in blue. 
and we estimated those numbers based off of the prior financial information. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all free cash flow after year four, and that's $29 billion. We had a present value of those numbers back to today's dollars using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a present value of these numbers in green. And if you sum them up, that's $30.6 billion. And that's the value of the company according to the model. And if we divide that by 2.3 billion shares, we get an intrinsic stock price of $13.50. It's trading at $14.50, so it's trading at an 8% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at $15. So they're on the other end of it, but we're all in the same pretty tight range. So the stock is trading at intrinsic value. So it looks like it was trading at a premium for a while, but then once coronavirus hit, the stock dropped. So stocks can always trade well below or well above what they're worth. It just really depends on how people perceive the future of the company. So right now, the value of the company is around $14, but if oil prices go up, I would expect the stock price to go up quite a bit. Let's look at the financial ratios to see if we get more information. They have a good PE of 15.0, a good price to sales of 2.5, and a really good price to book of 1.0. So I like to see a 15 or below on a PE, and they're exactly at 15. That's stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, I just took the net income over the shares outstanding. And to get the price to sales ratio, that's stock price over sales per share. And to get sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see 2.5 or below in this ratio, and they're at 2.5. So ironically, they're at the exact points which I look for, for these two ratios. But their price to book is really good. That's stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. So this indicates that you are not taking any risk by buying the stock because the book value, the amount you would receive if the company went bankrupt, is more than the value of the stock. They have a really bad current ratio and a bad ROE. Current ratio is current assets 3.2 billion over current liabilities 5.1 billion. So this means they cannot cover the current liabilities so they have to take on more debt. This could be a timing issue where the next quarter or the following quarter they would fix this ratio. But right now they're below. ROE is net income over equity, and I like to see above 20%. They're at 6%, so they're not providing good value to their equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is 2.2, so they can cover their interest payment a little more than two times, so that's okay. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Enbridge, is a Canadian company, Enterprise, Energy Transfer, Frontline, MPLX, One Oak, Planes, and PBFX Logistics. Kinder Morgan is smack in the middle, and if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So even though they have a good ROE, it's worse than the average in the industry. The average is 9.8. They're also worse than the average in price of sales. The average is 1.4, they're 2.5. They are better than the average in price to book at 1.0. The average is 1.3, and a lot of companies have no price to book because they have zero equity in that capital structure, which means they're 100% debt. Current ratio 0.6, which is below the average, not a good ratio. ROE is 6%, the average is 11%, so they're not doing good there. One Oak is doing really well in that ratio. In terms of debt, they're doing much better than the average. They have 50% debt, while lots of companies are 100% debt. In terms of market cap, they're doing really well at 32 billion. Enterprise is bigger, and Enbridge is the biggest. But I predict out of these nine companies, a few of them will file bankruptcy, and the ones that do not file bankruptcy will take their market share and prosper. But we can't know for sure who's gonna be filing bankruptcy. That's why we have to try to use the best information we have to figure this stuff out. Thanks for watching the video.